We're going to begin reading in verse 5 and read through verse 13. Very familiar passage of Scripture, but I want to show you some things that God has laid on my heart this morning and feel like it's going to encourage you and help you. Amen. Because we live in a world with so much negativity, it's good to come in God's house and get an encouraging word. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 5. When you have it, say amen. If you are still looking for Matthew, say, I need to read my Bible. All right. So let's go into the Word of God. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant, lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servants, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the anointing that is upon your word. And God, I can't preach without you. I need you today and every day. I ask you to anoint these lips of clay today. God, that I may say what thus saith the Lord to your people. Help us to prepare our hearts and be open our minds that we can receive from you today. And we ask this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing for the reading of the Word of God. I want to preach to you this morning on the thought, only a word. Only a word. You know, when God created the heavens and the earth in the book of Genesis, and we read about it, when God created the heavens and the earth... He accomplished this by speaking to them. God said, let there be, and whatever else come out of his mouth after that came into being. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, let there... uh, Let the land separate from the waters and let there uh, be trees and birds and fish and all that. And whatever God said out of his mouth came into being. So God created everything that we see by the words out of his mouth. Uh, God, no matter what comes out God's mouth, becomes truth. Whatever God says comes into being. Uh, That's why we used to sing a song. It says, whose report shall you believe? And it says, we shall believe the report of the Lord because it doesn't matter what the doctor says it doesn't matter what the psychiatrist says it doesn't matter what a judge says it doesn't matter what anybody else says because when God speaks a word whatever God declares is what's going to happen when God declares something it's going to happen if God has declared it over your life you can rest assured that it's going to come to pass if God has spoken it over this church you can rest assured it's going to come to pass if God's spoken it over your children let me tell you something the devil may be fighting but God is a God that keeps his word and what God said over your children shall come to pass if you just keep believing and you keep holding on God's word will come to pass amen I'm already preaching in my in my introduction but God's word shall come to pass Amen. I I just want to remind somebody today, and I feel this in my spirit, that we need to remember God's word is going to happen. 
You say, well, I don't see how it's going to happen. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. God, I don't know how it's going to happen. God, I don't know how you're going to work it out. But I know that you are not a man that you should lie or the father of men that you should repent. What you've said shall come to pass because you declared that your word would not return unto you void, but it would accomplish that thing that you sent it to do. Amen. God still speaks today. People tell me all the time, well, I don't know how God's speaking to me. How do you know when God speaks to me? Can I tell you something? There's 66 books right here of God speaking to you. Amen. This is the absolute truth. The only absolute truth on the face of the world today is God's word. Amen. And if you need a word from God, get in your Bible. You ain't got to run around chasing another preacher. Get in your word and God will speak to you. If you need to get a hold to God, get in your Bible. Amen. People want to run around to this prophet and that prophet. And I believe in prophets. They are scriptural and they are for today. Regardless of what some preachers say that, that prophecy died out. But their prophets are here today. But a prophet is not a soothsayer. He's not a fortune teller. He should just um, confirm what you already know in your spirit. Hello? And people are running around to this one and that one trying to get a word from God. And they're so confused they don't know what they believe. Hello? When you want to get a word from God and you know it's from God, get it out of your Bible. Woo! Because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Guess what? God's got going to go against his word. Woo! That's why when people come telling me all the time, I got a word from the Lord. If it don't match up with the Bible, I got a, you got a word from yourself. Yeah. Amen. If it don't line up with the word of God, you better not listen to that mess. Amen. Let me move on. So that was the first line of my notes. i got to hurry up. When, when God created heavens and the earth, he did it by speaking to them. Then God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So man was created not only to look like God, but to operate the same way that God operates. Are y'all tracking? That is why when God gave man dominion over the earth, God said, I'm going to create the earth, I'm going to put everything in it, and then I'm going to create a man to rule it. And God's original design was for man to rule earth the same way that God ruled heaven. So God said, I'm going to give man dominion over the earth. Then God brought the animals that he had created to Adam and said, you got to name them. And the scripture says that whatever Adam called them, they became known as that. Adam was a pretty cool guy. He come up with duck-billed platypus. God brought him a rhinoceros. He, ah, it looks like a rhino. You know, Adam come up with all this stuff. How? I have no idea, but he had to be a pretty cool guy. Amen? So whatever Adam called them, they became known as that. And this teaches us something right here. God gave man dominion over the face of the earth. Then he brought the animals to Adam and said, you've got to name them. What does this teach us? God was letting us know that you cannot rule what you refuse to name. You can't rule what you refuse to name. Whew. So many people today cannot overcome certain things because they refuse to name it. Well, I'm just having a little problem. Well, I'm just having a little issue. It's really not what, what people say it is. I, I'm not an addict. I, I can control it. I can stop anytime I want to. Hello? Well, well, I can quit doing this anytime I want to. And people today struggle to overcome things because they refuse to name it. They'll say, I don't really have a problem. I really don't have an issue. And they continue to struggle. And then wonder why they can't seem to overcome stuff. You know, there's people today that are in denial about what they're struggling with. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. Oh my gosh. Y'all okay? <laughs> denial. <laughs> denial. Some of y'all get that later. It'll be about 3 o'clock today to hit you and you'll be like, ah! <gasps> 
So there are people today that are in denial about things going on in their life. Well, it, it's, it's, it's everybody else. It's not me. You ever met somebody like that? I met somebody that no matter where they went, no matter who they was around, somebody else was always doing them wrong. And, of course, me being me, I don't have a filter. What goes in here comes out here, and it gets me in trouble a lot of time. And I'm like, well, if you go in everywhere you go, and it's always somebody's got a problem with you, someone's hurting you, have you ever thought about maybe the problem's you? And not everybody else. I don't recommend doing that a lot. Because it don't go over well. Uh, but uh, so people struggle though because they don't want to name that, hey, I've got an issue. Well, I don't have anger issues. They just get on my nerves. Can I just preach? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have gossiping issues. I just like to get prayer requests out there. Let me, let me stay up here for a minute. So from the time of creation on, man has had authority on the earth through the words that he speaks. How do you know this? One day Joshua was in a battle and the sun started going down. And Joshua was like, I need more time, I need more time. So Joshua bows his chest up turns around, points his finger at the sun and says, stand still. And the Bible said the sun did not move for about the span of a day. Y'all with me? Y'all act like this ain't in the Bible. It's in there. So man used his authority to command things on the earth to happen. Joshua told the sun to stand still and it did. Whew. The Bible says that we were created a little lower than the what? The angels. But Jacob found himself wrestling with an angel all night long, and he defeated the angel. So if the angel was more powerful than Jacob, how in the world did Jacob defeat an angel? Even when the angel touched the hollow of his thigh, that is where your hip bone goes into your pelvis, and it became dislocated. Jacob still held on and kept fighting. Why? Because God had gave man dominion over the face of the earth and the angel found himself in the dominion of man why else do you think Jesus did not do anything on the earth until he became wrapped up in flesh oh let's move on Joshua spoke to the sun and told it to stand still Jacob defeated an angel we are told to speak to the mountains and they will move we are told when we pray believe that we already have it don't doubt it in our heart and we shall have whatsoever we say we shall have whatsoever we say we have got to get to the place people of God that we watch what words we speak why because the scripture teaches us that life and death are where in your tongue quit speaking curses over your children Quit speaking curses over your spouse. Your spouse may be the biggest jerk in the world, but quit calling him the biggest jerk and call him you're the man of God that he created you to be. Hello? Your kids may be worse than baby's kids. But quit saying you just as bad as your daddy. I can't stand you at times. Hello? You just like your daddy. Hello? Our kids at our house have, have moments and depending on what kind of moment they in, Michelle's like, you your daddy's kid. Like, why don't you throw me under the bus? Begin to speak life over them. Your, your kid may be struggling with addiction, struggling with addicts. Start speaking. You're the woman of God he created you to be. You're the man of God he created you to be. Your, your kid may be, may be wayward and, and going away from the Lord. Your spouse may be there. Your children may be acting a fool. But declare life over them and quit speaking death over them. Amen. Quit, quit, speaking, quit speaking all these negative things over people. Quit speaking negative things over your life. Well, I'm never going to get out of debt. Well, with that attitude you won't. Amen. You sitting there crying, I'm never going to get out of debt. And you in the nail salon getting fake nails and put it on a credit card. Hello? 
I'm never going to get out of debt. And they sew it in your weave you just paid $49.95 for on a credit card. When God blessed you with hair, some of y'all. Amen. God only made a few perfect heads and the rest he put hair on. Amen. Some of y'all can't pull off bald. Your head's all lumpy. <laughs> Let me move on. So, so people say they don't have all these issues, but we got to understand when we speak, our words are so powerful. Why? Because we were created in the likeness of the God that speaks creation into existence. Now, I'm not saying we're a God, but I'm saying we were created, according to Scripture, in the image and likeness of a God. Amen? So we have to operate the same way that he operates. And you've got to ask yourself, are you your own worst enemy by the words that you speak? When's the last time you built yourself up? Well, I think that's conceited. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you've got to look in the mirror and say, you're the man. Hey, you get to a point when ain't nobody got your back, you'll have to learn to encourage yourself. David's men wanted to kill him. David didn't get mad. He went over there and he said, Lord, I thank you that I'm your servant. God, I thank you that, I, you know, sometimes you just got to encourage yourself. Quit waiting on somebody else to encourage you. Pe people get on my nerves. They all, well, they didn't, nobody call me and encourage me. Man, encourage yourself. Man, I've looked in the mirror before me like if God would have made anything better, he'd have kept it for himself. Joke, guys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, some of y'all are looking at me like, oh. <laughs> Learn to encourage yourself. Don't beat yourself up so much. Amen. Know who you are. We had a thing when I was growing up, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. It was a magnet on my parents' refrigerator. And, it all, and I always would walk by and read it when I was having a rough day. And it said, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. Learn to, learn to speak positive over yourself. Learn to speak positive over your children. Learn to speak positive over your home. It says we'll have whatever we say. Let me move on. So in our text, we are introduced to a centurion. Now, a centurion was a commander of a century in the Roman army. Does anybody want to guess how many soldiers are in a century? Thank you, Brother May. A hundred. How many years are in a century? A hundred. <laughs> so there was a hundred soldiers in a century. So a centurion was a commander over a century or a hundred soldiers. And this centurion came to Jesus and he was pleading with him saying, Lord, my servant is at home He's paralyzed, and he's dreadfully tormented. It is apparent that the centurion cared greatly for his servant and was moved with compassion by his situation. This centurion was a very important man, very powerful man, commander of a host. But he still had, it is apparent that he had compassion for this servant and his situation. We must never get to the place, as people of God, that we lose our compassion for other people. Never get to the place that you lose your compassion. I think many times when we get saved, we get so religious that we forget to be compassionate. Amen. Because we get new mercies every day. And it's only by His mercies that we're not destroyed, we're not consumed. We need to have compassion for people. Have compassion for those that are hurting. Have compassion for those that are, that are weak. Have compassion for those that are bound. Love them and show them Jesus Christ. Hello? We must never get to the place that we're not moved by compassion. In Matthew chapter 9, next chapter over, we read where Jesus is followed by a great multitude and he looks out on them and the Bible says he had compassion on them. Now, I'm sure all of them wasn't where they needed to be with God, but God still had compassion on them. Can I tell you something? The, the worst sinner there is today, God still loves them. God still has a plan for their life. God still wants to use them for his glory and for his kingdom. And we need to be the same way. Never lose your compassion. And you say, well, you can't. It's hard to be compassionate nowadays because there's so many shysters. Hello? People ask me all the time, me and my wife, we give till it hurts. 
And I'm not saying that boastfully, but that's something the Lord taught me to give and it shall be given unto you. When we give, we give to people continually. And folks ask me, they say, well, wonder if they're going to buy dope with it. I say, that's between them and God. I did my part because I don't want God to say, I was naked and you didn't clothe me. Hello? I was, I was hungry and you didn't give me nothing to eat. Hello? What they do is between them and God. Hello, we cannot lose our compassion for people. We've got to be compassionate. And this centurion was compassion. And God help us have compassion and not judgment for those people facing a battle. And the centurion did not let his position affect his compassion. Never get too big that you don't care about people. Never get so important that you don't love people. Never get, and I need to say this to a lot of preachers, never get so, so holy and so up there that you become untouchable by people. Amen. There's people from all over the world blow up my Facebook. I'm talking in Africa and uh, Kuwait and Pakistan. They blow up my Facebook. Hey, pastor, how are you? Can we get, do we get so big that we just don't have time for people? Or can we say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Pray that everything's going good for you. And never get so big that, that we're untouchable by people. Have compassion. When the centurion made his plea to Jesus, he, Jesus responded, I will come and heal him. Jesus was ready and willing to go with the centurion. <laughs> He's always willing and ready to respond to our pleas. Some of you be like, well, I need God to do something. I need God to do something. When's the last time that you asked God to do something? Well, I just don't know if he can. I had a preacher ask me one time, and it really struck a nerve with me. It hit me hard. He said, when's the last time you asked God for something hard? Do we really know that he's a God that nothing is too hard for him to do? Do we really know that he's a God that nothing is impossible with him? Do we get to the point that we'd be like, well, this is even too much for him. I just don't know how it's going to work out. Let me tell you something. Ask him for the hard things. Ask him for the hard things. When Elisha was taken into heaven and Elisha said, I want a double portion of your anointing. Elijah said, you've asked for a hard thing. But nevertheless, hey, I want to tell you something. Ask God for the hard things. Ask God to do the impossible. Ask God to make a way where there seems to be no way and watch him work. Because what does the Bible say? If you ask and don't doubt in your heart, you'll have what? Whatsoever you say. So when's the last time we ask God for something hard? When's the last time we ask God for something impossible? He's always willing and ready. Jesus said when the centurion came to him and he said, Lord, you got to do something. Please help. He was willing and ready to respond. When Jesus said he would come, the centurion answered and said, I'm not worthy for you to even come under my roof. He said, all I want you to do, Jesus, is speak the word and he'll be healed. All it takes is only a word from you and he'll be healed. And then the centurion goes on to explain why he feels this way by saying, I've got the authority to speak to those under him and follow him. You see, the centurion understood the way authority works. He says, if I tell this one to go, he goes. If I tell this one to come, he comes. And if I tell my servant to do something, he does it. He knew that what he spoke would come to pass because of his authority. Are y'all tracking with me? Stay with me. He didn't have to ask twice. He didn't have to beg. He knew that his authority would ensure that it was done. And he understood that in the natural, he had that authority. And that the natural responds to authority. Let me, let me meddle here for a minute. He knew that the natural responds to authority. Why do you think the enemy is launched an assault on natural authority today? People hate cops. For no reason. Amen. Amen. I'm as cool as they come, laid back as they come, but when I put on my uniform, people look at me with disdain. Why? 
because the enemy wants to fight natural authority. We got kids. When we were growing up, if you acted the way kids act in school today, that principal would have whooped you with that paddle with the little holes in it. I think it, them little holes was in it because when he hit you so hard, parts of your flesh would go through those holes. And you'd have like a pattern on it. That way when you got home and your parents knew you got a whooping at school, what happened? But now we got kids that want to talk back to teachers. What grade was that you were subbing the other day? Eighth grade. And she's going to text me about like 8.15 or 8.20 and done sent full five to the office. We got kids today that have no respect for authority. And this is a launch, an attack of the enemy. Okay? Y'all checking with me. We got hate for cops. We got hate uh, for elders. Went to a call yesterday when I was working that... Uh, uh, a lady on oxygen couldn't even walk, and an 82-year-old man, some young kid, was trying to jump on them. You used to never hear of that kind of stuff happening because the enemy understands that the natural response to authority. Why? Um, the enemy has launched an attack against an authority because whatever happens in the natural, there's always a spiritual counterpart. So if the enemy can teach kids a disregard for authority in the natural then he can teach them that there's a disregard for authority in the supernatural and they can never enjoy the blessings of God because they don't understand the authority they have through Jesus Christ are y'all tracking so what the the enemy is basically trying to raise up a generation that don't understand the power of authority so that he can keep them from operating in the, the way that God raised them up to operate. I'm going to explain a little more, y'all. Just hang on with me. Because the centurion had such an understanding of authority, when he came to Jesus, he said, all you have to do is speak. And a servant would be made whole. He recognized the authority that Jesus possessed. You know, when we come to God, we must recognize he has all authority and power. We must recognize he has all authority and power. Matthew 28 and 18. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Earth is a natural place and heaven is a supernatural place. And Jesus said, he has authority in the natural and the supernatural. You know, if you need things to adjust in the natural, Jesus has the authority to make it happen. If you need things to adjust in your spiritual life, in the spirit realm, Jesus has the authority to make it happen. All he has to do is speak a word. All he has to do is speak a word. You don't even have to stop what you're doing, Jesus. I just need a word. Jesus, you don't have to make the trip. I just need a word. The centurion said, I'm at a place in my life and my servant needs a miracle from God, but I've come to understand because of the authority that you have in the natural and the authority that you have in the supernatural that all you have to do is speak a word and whatever comes out of your mouth is going to manifest. All you got to do, God, is speak a word. Can I tell you today, if you need a miracle from God, all you need is just a word from him. All you need is just a word from God. All you need is God just to speak over your situation. You ain't got to run to a revival. You ain't got to run to a faith healer. You ain't got to run to a meeting. All you need God to do is speak a word over your life. Amen. There's healing in his word. There's deliverance in his word. There's power in his word. Amen. I, I learned to, when I went through a rough time in my life a while back, I was very ill for a couple of months and very, very sick. And I, I began to read and study a lot. And I found scriptures, and I, I, I'll share them with you one day, but I found scriptures of healing where the word of God is actually healing. And I began to pray a prayer, God, I thank you for your word, that it is at work in my life, and your word is manifesting out of my life. Uh, not only is your word working, but your word is manifesting. When his word manifests out of your life, I can say by his stripes, I am healed. Uh, I am not, I'm not bound anymore because he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And whatever you're facing today, if you'll just say, Lord, your word is manifesting out of my life, I decree it and declare it because when the word manifests out of your life, then you can have everything that it says you can have. Because the Bible teaches us that the promises of God are yes and amen. 
In other words, everything in God's word is for you. Amen. He said, Jesus, you don't have to make a trip. I just need only a word. Jesus, you don't have to stop. I just need a word. He had authority in the natural. The centurion had authority in the natural, but here he needed a supernatural miracle. So he had to seek out somebody with supernatural authority. Are you tracking with me? He said, I got authority in the natural, but I'm needing some stuff to shift around in the supernatural. He said, so I got to find somebody that has the same authority in the supernatural that I possess in the natural. So he sought out Jesus and he said, all you got to do is speak a word. <laughs> and just like the natural, watch this. I told you he had authority. If he told this servant to go, he went and come, he went. He had the natural response to authority. But the supernatural has the same counterpart. The supernatural also responds to authority. The supernatural responds to authority as well. Jesus wasn't even present with the serpent where the supernatural manifested, but he still commanded it to manifest. Amen. All this and the supernatural had no choice but to manifest because someone with authority commanded it to. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the Bible says he called with a loud voice and what commanded Lazarus to come forth? Jesus had to call his name. Why? Because if Jesus would have just said, come forth, every dead person in the world would have got up. Hello? You know when Peter walked on the water? Jesus didn't say, Peter, come. He said, come. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me walk to you on the water. And he said, come. That means everybody in the boat could have got out and walked on water. But only one of them had faith to get out. Amen. Only one had faith to get out. Watch this. The supernatural had no choice but to manifest because someone with authority commanded it. You know, you and I were given natural authority on this earth at the time it was created. God gave man dominion over the earth. We have natural authority. The Holy Spirit living on the inside of us gives us supernatural authority. Are y'all tracking? Revelations 1 tells us that he has made us kings and priests. Let me break that down for you. A king has natural authority. Back in the days when there were kings... It wasn't up for debate. What the king said went. If the king said, I'm fixing to chop your head off, you didn't have an appeal. You didn't sit on death row for 38 years while the taxpayers fed you. Ooh, struck a nerve right there. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't go through all this. When the king said what he said went, that was what it was. That was what it was going to be. He had such natural authority that whatever he declared, he would do royal proclamations and put his seal on it. That's what it was going to be. The Bible said he's made his kings and priests. A king has that natural authority. Now a priest had spiritual authority. It was before the priest that they brought Jesus when they arrested him. The priest had their, the, the, the church and the synagogue had their own soldiers. They, they, had, they had such authority and had a lot of weight behind them so they had a priest has spiritual authority they carried great authority and the scripture says that God has made us kings and priests in other words God gave us through salvation and the power of the Holy Spirit he has given you and I both natural and spiritual authority are y'all tracking we got natural authority based on creation we got spiritual authority based on what Jesus did when he died on the cross rose again and we've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Watch this. So we have natural and spiritual authority and have the authority to declare both natural and spiritual. So we can, we can command natural things and spiritual things to line up. But the problem is many Christians today don't have an understanding of authority the way the centurion had. They don't understand the power and the authority that we have from being a spirit-filled believer. Can I tell you something? The Holy Ghost is not for us to shout and for us to speak in tongues. It, that, those things are great. But that's not what it's designed. Uh, that's not its purpose in our life. Its purpose, it said, you shall receive what? 
power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Hello? I love to shout. I pray in the Spirit. Amen. But we need to recognize the authority and the power that comes with being filled with the Spirit. It's not just for us to shout. It's not just for us to speak in tongues. But it is for us to declare into the supernatural, declare in the natural. Why? That's why Jesus said, I've given you what? The keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound where? Whatever you loose on earth is loosed where? So he's gave us keys to the kingdom. He's gave us the keys to the natural and the supernatural. But the problem is the keys do us no good if we keep them in our pocket. People tell me all the day, there's just so many closed doors in front of my, my life. I don't know what I'm going to do. Every time I turn around, there's another closed door. I'm like, well, take the keys out your pocket and unlock it. I got the keys to the kingdom. There's a closed door in my life. Seems like the enemy's fighting and trying to keep that door closed. I got the keys to the kingdom. Whatever I loose on earth is what? In other words, I'm going to loose it here on earth and heaven's going to back me up. Woo! Amen. I'm going to loose it on earth and heaven's going to back me up. God don't care about doors. They closed all the doors in Joshua's face. So God said, I'll just tear the walls down to get you in. Woo. God said, I'll tear the walls down to get you in. We, we got to quit worrying about all that and realize what authority that we have in the kingdom of God. But we got so many of our Christians that walk around like whipped puppies with our tails between our legs. Oh, the devil's been on me. He's just been riding me and riding me. And I told somebody one time, they were like, the devil's just been riding me and riding me. I said, well, then take the saddle off. Can I tell you something? The devil works by intimidation. He works by intimidation. And when you stand up to him, he's going to go. The scripture says the devil is like a roaring lion. There's only one lion, and that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. That's Jesus Christ himself. But the devil is like a roaring lion, going about seeking whom he may devour. He's, he, he growls and he hollers and, and all that. But when you stand up and say, I'm a spirit-filled, born-again child of the Most High God, the devil don't want anything to do with you. So he wants to intimidate us to thinking that he's more stronger than he is and that we're weaker than we are. But square your shoulders. Stand up and say, I'm a child of the Most High God. I am a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I have power. And my Bible teaches me to resist the devil. And he will flee. Hallelujah. So we have authority in the natural and the spiritual, but we got to realize that we have that authority. Instead of talking about how bad it is and how bad you got it, take authority and tell those things, uh-uh, I don't accept this. Romans tells us to call those things that be not as though they were. You ever read that in the scripture? Call those things that be not as though they were. In other words, oh, I refuse to accept this. Hmm. But let me meddle for just a minute. When's the last time you told the devil, I refuse to let you have my kid? I don't accept that they're going to be wayward. I don't accept that they're going to be bound. Devil, I refuse to let you have my marriage. Whoo! Devil, I refuse to let you have my finances. Devil, I refuse to accept the report of that doctor. Amen. Come on. Come on. Whoo! Why? Because I have authority. Mm. I have authority in the kingdom. I have authority in the natural. I have authority in the spiritual. And I can command the blessings. I command the blessings to come. I command blessings on my family. I command blessings on my children. I command blessings on my church. I command blessings on my brothers and my sisters. If I've ever prayed for you before and you're sick, you'll notice when I pray, I'll be like, I command this body to come into order with the word of God. Why? Because I recognize I have authority in the spirit. And guess what? If you are a born again, spirit filled believer, you have that authority as well. Amen. You say, well, we don't hear a lot of preaching and teaching about this. Why? Because so many people, and that's why so many people stay bound. 
because they don't realize the authority that they have. Amen? Some of you are staring at me like a calf at a new gate. I'm not preaching something that's not in the Word of God. But we don't hear this being preached a lot because we want to pre preach a gospel of, oh, y'all pray for me that I can just hold out. I need your prayers because the devil's been on me and oh I just y'all God's got to intervene. Sometimes you need to intervene. Hello? I just don't know what I'm going to do with my kids. They just won't listen and and they're, they're acting up. Hello? Sometimes you need to intervene. Hello? My kids thought one time they were going to slam a door in my house and lock it. I said, this is your one and only warning. There ain't no locked doors in this house, or either I'll take it off the hinges and you won't have a door. Hello, parents? Quit trying to be your kid's friend. I tell mine, my oldest is 22, and I'm like, as long as you're living in my house, eating my groceries and sucking up my air conditioner, it's my rules. I'm sorry, I don't tiptoe around my kids. Well, they, they may get offended. They're youngins. They'll be all right. Hello? Sometimes you need to intervene. Take that authority in your own house. Hello? Somebody come in your house acting a fool. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. This is my house. Amen? Hey, I, I work in law enforcement. And, and <laughs> I'll tell people all the time, like, no, no, you don't need the cops. You need to pull your belt off and handle your business. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I am not an advocate of beating children. Child abuse is a horrible, horrible thing. But God gave them two nice little padded cushions back there that it ain't going to hurt them and it would help them. Amen. Thank y'all. Now, I love my kids. Oh, my God, I love my kids. And when they were little, I don't got hard my old age. But when they were little, no, I've gotten softer. Haley and them says, Bella gets away with so much that I never did. Like, whatever, shut up. <laughs> but this is no joke. I, my kids are my life. And when I had to spank them, which I very seldom had to spank them because I taught them from a very young age respect and, and what to do and what not to do. And God just blessed me with good kids because he knew it killed me. And I, I spanked Haley one time, and I went in the other room, and I squalled for an hour. It hurt my feelings so bad to have to whoop her. But she was climbing up on the couch, and when she went to climb up on the couch, she bit me right there and pulled up with her teeth. If you've never been bit in the sweet meat, I thought I, thought I was dying. I thought she had bit a lung out or something. And I reached over there, and I popped her because she started biting. I said, you can't be biting. And then I went to the other room and squalled for an hour, partly because I was hurting, but because <laughs> she bit the fire out of me. Take authority, though, guys. Wesley, would you come? I'm getting ready to close. I've meddled enough today. But watch this. Jesus told the centurion. The centurion said, all it takes is a word. And Jesus told the centurion, he said, I've hadn't seen such faith like this in all of Israel. What does that let us know? That faith needs to mix with authority. If you really have faith, then speak to it and say, according to God's word, this is what it's going to be. We, we have faith. And, and I see so many people with such great faith. The Bible teaches us without faith it's impossible to please God. And I see people with such great faith. But when's the last time you took authority and mixed it with it? Well, I'm believing God to do this. Well, then what are you speaking to it? Is it done? Declare it in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I hadn't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Don't be shy and don't be timid. Stand up knowing that you're a child of God. Stand up knowing that whatever comes out of your mouth 
Heaven's going to back it up. You don't have to act like, well, well that, that's too bold for me. That's the problem. We need to be bold. Stand up. Speak. This is what it's going to be. This is the way it's going to be. Like Joshua said, as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. The centurion told Jesus, he said, I only need a word. I want to tell you today, all you need is a word. All you need is a word. All you need is a word. And God's given us a whole book. If you're sick in this place today, all you need is a word. If you're in here today and you're depressed, all you need is a word. If you're hurting, all you need is a word. Whatever your case may be, I want to tell you, you only need a word. This book's got it. You find what you need, and you declare this book. One of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible is Psalms 91. And I walk through my house reading it out loud, declaring it over my house. If you've never done that, I challenge you to do that. It'll change the atmosphere in your house. Walk through your house, read Psalms 91 out loud. And where it says, Thy and thou say, My. No pestilence shall come nigh my house. Hello? When flu season goes, no pestilence shall come nigh my dwelling. When the virus is around, hey, declare it. You think that's funny, but we don't hardly ever get sick at our house. There ain't no fussing in our house, except kids griping at each other. Our house is a refuge. Why? Because I walk through my house saying this is going to be a house of peace. This is going to be a place where my family can come in, shut the door behind us, and it be a refuge for my family. This is a place of safety. This is a, hey. Whew. What are you speaking? I challenge you, whatever you need from God, all you need is just to get a word from him. Would you stand with me this morning? I want to give this altar call this way this morning. If you got a need in this house today, I want to tell you something. All you need is a word. God's got it. If you need healing, if you need deliverance, if you need God to move in a situation, all you need is a word. I want to tell you something. You declare that word over your life and watch God start working it out. Father, I have delivered my heart today as you gave it to me. And God, I ask you today if there's those under the sound of my voice today, God, that have a need in their life. God, I just ask that you assure them that your word is more powerful than anything that we may face in this life. Your word is stronger than any problem. Your word is stronger than anything that we may be facing. God, that we grasp hold of your word and we decree it and declare it over our lives and that it would manifest out of our lives. God, I just ask you today, God, to minister to your people right now. Holy Spirit, just settle in this place and move right now. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And while God's presence is moving right now, I want to ask you this morning, if you have a need in this house today, I just feel led to pray for needs today. If you have a need today, I want you to come, and I want to pray with you this morning. If you have a need in this house today, would you come? We love you, Jesus. How much we love you, Jesus. How much we love you, Jesus. Well, if you have a need, I want to pray. We want to pray with you today. Oh, we love you, Jesus.
I could get some of our prayer team to come and gather with these that have came. How much we love you, Jesus. How much we love you, Jesus.
Amen. Thank you for those that stayed and tarried with us to pray for the needs. Amen. Pray that you were blessed by being in God's house today. Amen. Let me bless you. Father, thank you for the amazing privilege to be in your house today. And God, I pray that you would bless every person and every family represented in the wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, that you would let your face shine upon them. And God, you would give them peace. That everything they put their hands to would be blessed. God, we just love you and we praise you and ask you to go with us as we go our way and bring us back at the appointed time. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you. 